Syrian dictator, Mubarak, who will serve their interests and serve the interests of Israel against the interests of the Palestinians. Um, and that is a genuine uh, reaction, no doubt. But you can see that when you've got a powder keg like that of resentment and, and uh, uh, oppression that will not take it anymore, then it's very easy to trigger that and then manipulate it. And that's why when the revolution truly comes to America and Britain, as it will, then we um, involved in any of that need to learn the lessons and, and, and become streetwise about the way this thing works. Because how many times... When you look at these uh, uh, so-called people's revolutions, not least in the former Soviet Union, of, of Georgia, of Ukraine, of the Czech Republic, of uh, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, so on, these color revolutions, as they call them, um, again and again, it's been shown quite clearly that uh, Rothschild-connected uh, people like George Soros and uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski have been behind them, not least Soros's network of foundations that are not there for philanthropy. They are there to manipulate so-called, on the surface, people's revolutions that are putting their people in power. And you cannot ever judge the true nature of a revolution, its motivation and its background, until we see what has replaced the regime the revolution has, uh, has uh, removed. And when you look at Georgia and Ukraine and all these places where these Soros networks have been involved in the uh, manipulation, and not only that, the training of people in, in uh, uh, people's uh, uh, non-cooperation and protest uh, uh, techniques, um, the people that have gone into place have been invariably people who are front men for the very uh, the globalists and the Soros networks. Classic, Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili, scholarship to the U.S., Columbia Law School, George Washington University, New York law firm turns up and becomes president of Georgia after the so-called Rose Revolution manipulated by the Soros Foundations. We have this extraordinarily ludicrous situation now in the Ukraine, where I'm speaking next week, where um, a guy called Viktor uh, Yanukovych um, was um, uh, removed after what was claimed to be uh, rigged elections in, I think it was 2004, the so-called Orange Revolution, that very man is now president of the country. So that revolution, of course, uh, changed nothing with, with, with hindsight. And when you look at um, the situation now in Egypt, who turns up um, not lived in the country for, for most of his adult Mohammed life? Mohammed el Baradi, the okay, head of the exactly. UN... And, and who is this man? He's, he's uh, been on the board of the International Crisis Group, which claims on its website to be an independent, non-profit, non-governmental organization committed to preventing and solving deadly conflict, when it's actually there to manipulate regime change in the very way that I'm talking about. And they about. now admit that they sent him in the week before, they admittedly triggered it, they're bragging about it while publicly saying that they support Mubarak because they know Western support for Mubarak will enrage the populace even more. But then publicly at the same level admit that they're doing it. And, and so this is what I wanted to ask you, David. I want you to continue. Do you agree with my analysis here? Because I knew this a decade ago because I saw them bragging about it. But now they've come out in Wired Magazine, you name it, and, and admitted Google is NSA software for keyword. It, they just get you to search the database to put your own information on it so they literally know what you're thinking and doing. And Google says 93 to 99% of the time they know where you're going to eat, what you're going to surf, what you're going to do more than you even know. And they're able to predict the future. It's a, it's a scientific crystal ball to a certain extent by tracking mass movements of people and they knew that there was rebellion against all their dictators forming, and so they're going to trigger it early to then bring their people uh, back in, and that's basically what's happening. But we'll put up on screen uh, those uh, articles about Google. Uh, it was now claiming they're getting companies where they can do this. That's what they've been set up to do all along. That's why the globalists are so arrogant, uh, is because uh, they literally do nothing but study humanity and how we operate. 
Yeah, well, the International Crisis Group board members, uh, Chairman George Soros, uh, Mohammed El Baradi, Wesley Clark, say no more. Javier Solana, uh, the uh, NATO Secretary General, as was. Sabigny Brzezinski is one of their senior advisors. Richard Armitage, for goodness sake. And Prince Turkey Al Faisal who is a member of the Saudi Arabia royal family, who, of course, love democracy and freedom, which this international crisis group is supposed to uh, represent. So you look at that, and it's quite clear that um, El Baradi is their man. Now, also, the Daily Telegraph in Britain has been running... Um, uh, stories and articles about the fact that some of the people that were uh, that triggered this uh, popular uprising, which in its in its in its entirety, that's what it is from the people's point of view, were actually uh, connected to the American embassy in uh, in Cairo and came to America and, and 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 all the rest of it. So you can see how it's been manipulated. And the thing is that people like Brzezinski in his books, they are telling you what's going to happen, uh, disguised as prophecy, if you like. Kissinger came out uh, on Bloomberg last night and said, this is only the first scene in the first act of a play. That's exactly what I was coming to. Um, that uh, quote, this is, the only, this is only the first scene of the f first act of the drama that is played out. That is telling you what's coming. And you see, I've been writing for years about the fact that these Arab oil states and these Arab uh, dictatorships and royal dictatorships were being played like a violin. It was only a matter of time. And, and again, you come to the shades of grey. Should the dictators and, and royal... Um, Tyrannies in Yemen, Algeria, Libya, Jordan, Syria, Morocco, Saudi Arabia. Oh, Stay yes, there, Saudi David. Arabia. We got to break it. Powerful info. We're going to look at the geopolitical map when we come back. By the way, just a broadcast note. Uh, joining us Thursday, George Norrie is going to be on the broadcast, getting, giving us his take on what's happening to the world economy and what's happening in Egypt. But I could not concur with the piercing understanding of David Icke more on this issue. That's why I admire him so much. His research is always so up to date, and, and piercing uh, is the word, and, and, and that's exactly what's happening. Instead of even black or white or gray, it's more of a prism of, 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 of spectrums, and the globalists are riding this tiger of rebellion against their own tyranny, and like judo, using the resistance uh, of the population against them and then throwing it back at them. And so we, by understanding this, though, we can defeat them. And I want to talk more about their predictive systems, future predicting systems, and how David thinks we counter that. But David, continuing, you got cut off uh, by the break. We're running through the dictatorships uh, uh, that are in the Middle East, North Africa, and where this is going. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about Yemen, Algeria, Libya, Jordan, Syria, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, Oman, Kuwait. All these are uh, so-called royal uh, dictatorships and, and, and tyrannies imposing upon the people. So should they go? Absolutely they should go. But we're back to, we're back to and as soon as possible, but we're back to shades of grey. The question is not just should they go, it's... What is the agenda for making them go at this time? And, you know, um, there's a number of things that come from this. Um, if they, as uh, Kissinger has indicated here, um, they plan to create uh, uh, falling dominoes across the Middle East, first of all, that creates massive upheaval. It creates what? Chaos. What is their technique? Order out of chaos. Now, on one level, this could be very dangerous for places like um, Israel, but it could also be incredibly beneficial to those that run Israel and very, very beneficial to those behind this global agenda because they want the Middle Eastern countries in a, uh, a state of subordination, and uh, chaos will create that. The other thing is that... Where, where does the, most of the world's oil come from? It comes from the Middle East. You start uh, whacking domino uh, 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 upheavals across the Middle East and the oil countries, not least the big one, Saudi Arabia, and what are you going to have, Alex? You're going to have an enormous um, oil crisis, which is going to, of course, knock on to crises and financial crises and, and, and industrial crises and living crises throughout global society, which is precisely what they want. Massive, massive problems and upheavals and chaos for which they can offer the solutions of their centralized global fascist Orwellian dictatorship. So, so it, it's clear to me that um, this genuine 
reaction to this disgraceful, outrageous, evil uh, attack on human uh, society is being managed to bring about the next stage of the attack on human society. Expanding on that, we know in the last year the IMF and World Bank have ordered all of these third world uh, countries, not just the Middle East, North Africa, to cut through austerity uh, the bread ration, which around half the population of Egypt is on, making two dollars or less a day. And so they economically, through globalism, pull the levers, punch the buttons, then they send in their man on a white horse, who the London Independent calls the savior, exactly. uh, this El Baradi. Uh, so, so it's completely transparent to those that study this and know it, and the globalists are even admitting it. But, but on a larger front, the Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan, they just uh, re reshoveled the government towards them. In Saudi Arabia, uh, everywhere, the Saudis and others are freaking out, realizing the deal they made with the globalists is a deal with the devil, and they want the strategy of tension, the clash of civilizations. They want to get radical Muslims, like they got rid of Saddam and put Muslim, uh, radical Muslims in in Iraq. This is the strategy to then build them up as the enemy and to blame them for the exploding oil prices that were already being triggered via dollar devaluation. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's it. And uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, you know, this is, again, I keep coming back to this uh, uh, today, um, shades of grey, uh, becoming streetwise. Um, and just because something has a name on the door and appears to stand for something does not mean that at its core it does. I mean, crikey, um, you, you look at the classic um, Orwellian uh, use of names for organizations to um, give the impression that it's the opposite of, of what it really is. I mean, for goodness sake, we're talking here about uh, George Soros's Open Society Institute, which is the last thing the Open Society Institute actually wants. So when you look at things like Muslim Brotherhoods and look at almost any organization that has democracy in it, and you're looking at an organization that wants to take democracy away, uh, and just because it's called the Muslim Brotherhood does not mean that at its core it has um, even the, the best interests of Muslims at heart. You know, I, I was talking to... Um, uh, people have been involved uh, professionally in politics and intelligence and all the rest of it. David, stay there. Long segment coming up. That was a short segment. We'll continue there with the Muslim Brotherhood. And, and, and now if we're in the first scene in the first act of the play, what the full play is. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. And you resist by unlocking your mind, studying how the globalist engineer society, the priest class, how they manipulate by becoming aware of this in life, your family, in business, in everything. Your knowledge and your success will only increase. The New World Order does everything they can to suppress human potential, the human mind, and knowledge because the people perish for lack of knowledge. The people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, as the good book tells us. David Icke, uh, as we went to break, uh, you were starting to get into the first scene and the first act uh, for the New World Order, the global destabilization program, people ri rioting and protesting in Greece, in Ireland. Uh, at the Davos, Switzerland uh, meeting uh, last week, they called for 100 trillion in additional taxpayer money to the private banks, an open announcement of world government. All of that smoke screened by what's happening now. David Icke, please continue. Yeah, I was just uh, finishing off a point, Alex, about the fact that uh, just because something's called something doesn't mean that's what it represents and that's what it stands for, uh, including the Muslim Brotherhood. There's a lot of organizations in the um, Arab world that actually are fronts for, for Israel and, and the United States. Uh, Andreas von Bülow, I think you've, you've talked to him yourself over the years, uh, former German minister and an expert in, um, in intelligence, um, especially German intelligence in that uh, whole area. Andreas von Bülow. Yeah, I, I, I talked to him on the phone for a long time, years ago. 
uh, not long after 9-11, and uh, he was saying he knew for a fact that uh, Abu Nadal, of course, the infamous um, Arab terrorist, was actually uh, an asset of Mossad. That's how it works. Yeah, he was the former head of British uh, of, a, of a German intelligence yeah. and the former uh, German defense minister. He talked about the white supremacist uh, are, 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 are run by the globalists, the radical Muslims are run by them, the radical black groups, the radical Hispanic groups, all of these groups uh, are there so the government can play the part of the savior. Yeah, and of course we know the classic um, stands out like the proverbial uh, is Bin Laden, uh, Osama Bin Laden. We know that he was uh, a front man for the, for, the, for the same group. So when we see um, these names that appear to represent Muslims or appear to represent this or that or the other, we have to just, uh, again, streetwise, uh, shades of grey, just take a step back and, and let's see if they, they really do that. And again, it, we, we come back to the... Uh, the, the, the classic line, really, uh, by their actions shall they be judged. That's what we need to do, not by what they say, but what, what they do. Another interesting thing, Alex, you know, is that uh, there is this, this whole uh, deal about uh, what's known as Greater Israel, which is the area that uh, the Israel uh, extremists claim is theirs, uh, the, the real Israel. And it's interesting, when you look at the map of it, it includes, of course, Israel, Palestine that we see now, but it also includes a great chunk of um, of Egypt going across to Cairo it includes Jordan, it includes Lebanon, it includes Syria, it includes Iraq, it includes a great chunk of Saudi Arabia. Now, what we're looking at here, as you look at that map, are all the countries, or many of the countries, that are actually now in possible possible line for this domino effect that Kissinger was indicating with his with his quote. Um, and, and there is an agenda playing out here. And and when we um, look at what's happening in Europe, what we, what's happening in Britain, beginning to, what's happening in America, my goodness me, we want more. Not just people on the streets to show the numbers, but also non-cooperation with the system, so the system cannot cooperate, cannot operate. What because it needs us to do that? We must be um, learning lessons here, Alex, all the time. The, 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 for instance, the power of mass non-cooperation. When, when in Egypt they, they say curfews, people in very large numbers uh, refuse to do, do, do with that, and, and, and suddenly where's the power of the state? Um, understanding and starting to get uh, as much as we can prepared for the fact, as we've seen in, in Egypt, that when the real revolution unfolds against a regime, one of the first things to go is not, not only truth, <laughs> uh, but actually the internet and mobile phone networks so people can't communicate. And, and, and another thing we need to uh, keep in our minds is no ideology. When we um, uh, really trigger this true human revolution against these, uh, these tyrannies or collective tyrannies, different faces uh, or, or masks on the same face around the world, no ideology, equal freedom for everybody, no matter what their color, creed, religion, view, anything. Freedom must be our focus, not ideology and religious belief and all that stuff. We can argue about that or chat and debate about that. Let's keep uh, our focus on what, what affects us all, and that's our basic freedoms being taken away. And um, so many people, they talk about wanting freedom, Alex, but they don't want freedom. They, to a large extent, they want to replace a tyranny they don't like with a, with a tyranny they do, i.e. their belief system. These are the things that have to go, and we all must constantly keep our focus on who is... Uh, what is the motivation of the protest and the uprising? Um, who's going to be and what kind of uh, society is going to be in power when it's over? Who are these people coming in? Well, we actually know. Be, we know. On our side and claiming to be behind it. You know, we need to really get streetwise and learn from what's happening around the world so we don't get caught. Well, I agree with you. Now, we know that Mohammed el Baradi is a big U.N. globalist, a former head of the Atomic Energy Agency, U.S. trained. Uh, we know that he is for the inoculations. He is for the Planned Parenthood type stuff. He is a globalist. We know the Muslim Brotherhood, admittedly set up by British intelligence, is now menacing Saudi Arabia and others who we're not fans of. But the point is, the globalists want to have more radical regimes come in so that then Israel and others have an excuse to expand their land in the name of a security buffer zone. They're now moving out of the era of strong men. Uh, and and moving towards the strategy of of tension, what do you, from your research, see as the next dominoes uh, to fall? Well, any 
of them could be really uh, the, the answer to that is who's next on the on the list because it could be it could be any of them but the the, the thing also about um, um, Israel um, Alex is if this um, uprising uh, so-called uh, crisis uh, that, as it's being portrayed um, a crisis for tyranny on, on one level um, uh, it, 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 it continues to unfold then it's going to be also an excuse for massive military support to quote protect Israel and of course Israel's got a one of the biggest armies in the world from this sliver of land uh, in uh, the north of the Arabian Peninsula um, uh, because of uh, $3 billion uh, a year in, in uh, aid from the United States to Israel. And, of course, um, anything could happen if this really gets out of hand in the sense that, that, that uh, America could deploy forces to protect Israel as well as an excuse because, you know, one of the key... Um, things, Alex, and th this is, I think, very relevant. Not necessarily it will happen tomorrow, but but in this domino uh, falling situation that we're now facing, one of the things that's come up again and again and again and again is that the third world war, the third global conflict, the one that is to create, along with all the other things we're seeing, like finances and all the rest. Yeah, of that's it, what Albert Pike called for. Yeah, Albert Pike, yeah, in his in his letter, exactly the three world wars. Um, uh, and again, this, this also relates to what um, to what he said in terms of the Third World War. The common uh, theme is that that will be triggered in some way out of Israel and the Arab countries. And by the way, in 1878, he laid out World War One, who it would be between World yeah. War Two, and then finally World War Three. They would then destroy all the world religions out of the war and say we must have this new global one world government religion. I want you to get to that, but since you've mentioned it so much. So they're going after the key to the region, and, and, and they've been doing this doublespeak everywhere. We're for Mubarak, but we actually, that is the globalists, financed uh, the ongoing attempt to overthrow him because they know that that will help Mubarak if they say they're funding the outsider. It will hurt him if they support him. And I've read all over the news where they're openly bragging. So they'll put out their general press releases for the profane general public, but then buried in there talking to each other, they're bragging about what they're doing. Yeah, they've got a song sheet, and this is not projected days in advance, weeks, months, or even years in advance. It's projected decades in advance. Yeah, Brzezinski says 25 years in advance. Yeah, and, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe more. I mean, you know, the basic um, theme of what's happening was, was outlined before the turn of the 20th century in terms of the, the, the themes of it all. And, you, you know, the, uh, I've quoted people in my books uh, who've spoken over the years, like in the, the late 60s and stuff like that. That insiders who said this is what how the world's gonna gonna be and, and it's all unfolded as they said it would unfold because it is a blueprint and now we're seeing um, a real a major major card being played here which is designed to trigger um, offshoot uh, consequences in all directions because this is the tinder box this is the the the, the explosive point where they want to the next whole stage to explode out of well, you heard him. He, he, he said it's the key, and then by running destabilization ops in all the other countries that aren't just allies of the globalists, they can create the crisis to offer the military and economic solution. But, David, how frustrating is it for you and, and for myself, and I want to get your view on this, to have the blueprint, to have the CFR, Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, much of what they do public, admitting they would create a global currency crisis, they would end the dollar, bring in the band car, SDR, uh, you know, a hundred trillion, all now happening, but the yuppies have been put in their little comfort box and conditioned that none of this existed for decades, knowing that we have the documents, they preconditioned it didn't exist. So now that it even exists and has emerged, people have gone, some of them, into a catatonic state of denying it exists, even as it's announced. Well, this is uh, a, a major human trait in the programmed, manipulated human mind, which simply does not want to face what it doesn't want to believe is true. Um, so w when you um, are faced with something, you have a choice. You can literally face it and deal with it, and we could sort this if we did this in large enough numbers, or you can try to kid yourself 
um, that it doesn't exist, um, and therefore it's okay. You know, uh, people say in situations where it's obvious that horrific things are going to be done um, in the very near future, and they're still saying, oh, no, they'd never do that. No, you want to persuade yourself they'd never do that, so you don't have to get your backside unglued from the sofa and do things you'd rather not have to do. And this is why we're at this point, Alex, and it's like how much more confirmation do people want? How much more blatant does it have to be? Does it have to be the knock on the door? Does it have to be... Uh, being taken away after the knock on the door. I mean, when, when are you going to draw a line here? But, you know, on, on, on another level, there's great encouraging things happening because the number of people who are starting to yes. see it are, 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 are increasing all the time. Well, two things are happening, David. It's just a quick point. They, they need to get streetwise. And I keep coming back to this because they must. And streetwise means get informed. against uh, Mubarak, like the students in London who are protesting against outrageous fees to, to put them in debt to the banks for the rest of their lives just to get educated. Same in other uh, parts of the world. There are people um, on the streets because of the uh, economic uh, austerity programs in Greece and, and, and other places, but people, what those people need to understand is all those different subjects, all those different aspects, all those different events and situations that they are protesting about are masks on the same face. Yes. They need to take that step across the line and realize that it's all connected. Yes, and the in the end, every different thing they're protesting about, all roads lead to the same cabal. And it's the cabal we must focus on and the global agenda for the cabal so that we we, we, we challenge and expose and understand the picture rather than getting caught in the, just the pieces. So we see the forest instead of getting caught in the twigs. This is so important. No, no, I totally agree with you because the progenitor of all of this debt slavery, of this neo-feudalistic system, is the New World Order controllers. It is their social engineering model. And for the New World Order, global government is just the beginning uh, you know, as we say in the film Endgame, their stated plan is a global police state to then carry out the forced sterilization of the entire population except for a tiny group of globalists. This is full spectrum dominance. And if people just get angry at the atmosphere created by the, uh, by the engineers, their anger, their focus will be used and shunted and directed into empowering New World Order agendas instead of bringing it down. And that's why what you just said is the absolute paramount heart of everything and the genesis of true human liberty if we're going to have it. Yeah, who, who benefits? Who benefits? Who benefits? We've got to keep asking that. Who benefits from this situation? Who benefits from me reacting to this situation like this? Um, and this is why, why I say we have to get ourselves informed, not just about what size shoes the president of so-and-so takes, not that, just that kind of information, much of which we don't really need to know anyway, informed about how the uh, uh, psychological system works, the techniques of mass-minded emotional manipulation, and where this uh, cabal want to take the world. When we understand the basic techniques of mind and psychological manipulation and the goals that are uh, designed to be achieved, it's like getting that, your sight. immediately becomes so much more difficult to, to, to yeah. scam. Exactly. When you're not aware of these systems of control, it's like you're blind and deaf. As soon as you understand their tricks, it isn't as powerful anymore, and it actually becomes irritating. Not something that puts you into a trance, but something their attacks actually help us learn to be smarter, faster, to understand it. But, but going to break here, uh, here's the Associated Press. Uh, the IMF uh, says, or AFP, IMF says to help Egypt others in trouble. Oh, they're going to help them with more 20-30% interest rate loans. They're going to bring the Egyptians more under debt. They're going to jack up their taxes in even more. So there is part of your agenda with the physical takeover through the economic uh, bondage. we got two more segments with David Icke coming up. Powerful information. DavidIcke.com.
Knowledge is power. And does any of you listeners understand the world greater than David or myself do? All of us have different gifts, different talents and understanding. But the biggest mission is people are confused. They're angry right now. We can't have the globalists, as Ron Paul has said, misdirect them into supporting a bigger New World Order move. That's why we carry films like What in the World Are They Spring, dealing with chemtrails, my film Endgame that covers their master agenda, Invisible Empire that we produce by Jason Burmis is excellent, Terror Storm, a history of government-sponsored terror, all these films massively discounted at Infowars.com. And, and David's books and his work, all of it is so important. But David, we've got you into the next segment. You're gracious to join us. But I wanted to do something here that uh, the producers showed me earlier. And that's Tweet Psych. Uh, that's the website. And if you type in somebody's tweet account, uh, they're monitoring the tweets. The Library of Congress is saving all of them. And they know the psychological profile of your users. You type in the real Alex Jones for tweet, and you scroll down, and most of it is media, social, uh, you know, future, people wanting to know, you know, future trends, learning, uh, positive conceptual, basically, uh, philosophy, the senses. See, it's all about primordial, about uh, that's what people are into. They're into primordial, the core of humanity, destiny, enlightenment, awakening. That's who comes to my tweet, and they're tracking them and know who they are. And it's much more detailed with the cable boxes tracking you, the, the, the Google tracking you right down your individual profile. Now, you go to something like Two and a Half Men or Joe Rogan, and, you know, th these are nice guys, smart you know, shows, whatever. You know, I like Joe. He's into awakening. But still, the point is, what is it? It's sex. It's, 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 it's lower senses things. Uh, we'll scroll down and show that sex, vast majority. Uh, but then they're also into primordial and things like that. So you see some of the same uh, interest media. And if you type in something like Two and a Half Men, uh, it will uh, you know, show you what they're into. This is just one example of how they've gotten us tied into this. The Internet is a double-edged sword. They thought they would use it as a worldwide wiretap. DARPA did. Instead, we're using it against them. But we have to understand, they're now bragging that they can predict mass movements almost 100% of the time. How do you deal with something like that, with these super technologies the globalists have? David Icke. The thing about the Internet uh, is that it's given us so many tools to communicate information that these people overwhelmingly do not want communicated. Um, without the Internet, people would not at this point be anything like as informed about what's going on um, as they are. Therefore, given that the Internet was, uh, was introduced through military technology, etc., for um, that to be uh, given to the people, if you like, to use for the benefit of, of, of awakening and awareness, there must be something absolutely colossal and fundamental in it for them on the other side for that to have been done. And, you know, I think what we need to do is start to look about the, the reality and, 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 and from an Internet point of view. The Internet is actually a collective human mind or an extension of it. Um, because we, we put our thoughts, our dreams, our art, everything in one, one, one area. Yeah, we, we, the, the, anything that, that you focus on with mind becomes an extension of mind. And therefore, the collective human mind has an extension now called the World Wide Web, the Internet. And therefore, if you are skilled in understanding how to read this information, and goodness knows the uh, advancement of the computer technology they must have outside we can the can Organically do what their supercomputers can do individually. They're trying to mimic the human mind by scanning the web. What you can do is read the human mind by what the human mind is putting onto the web, an extension. Yes, of stay there, stay there, stay there. Power. The web is almost like a mirror of what people are really thinking. So the globalists can see our soul. They can see who we really are, just like a thousand question psychological test can show you something. Well, these are millions of choices we individually make watching digital TV that tracks us on Twitter, Facebook, you know, Google. 
they admit they can now predict mass movement futures, 93% of the time individuals. That's what they're telling us they have. But you're right. I, using the web and seeing things, uh, I can simply go to Shoutcast and tell what people are more interested in, watching the numbers go up. There's simple things like that, but it's much deeper. And the globalists know. That's why I've got Rolling Stone, New York Magazine, Newsweek, all these people calling me because they're saying, we see your numbers. My radio show, Infowars.com, bigger than MSNBC, a tiny operation. They see what, what all of us are doing is huge and powerful. They know the awakening's there, and they don't know how to deal with it. That's why Obama's calling for the Internet kill switch. That's why worldwide, Australia, England, they are actually scared. David Icke. Well, the, 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 when anyone um, in the public arena, a scientist or whatever, comes out and says, um, we're working on this technology which years from now um, could do this, say in terms of computers, they're talking about building quantum computers, the um, advancement and potential for which uh, to process information is just staggering. It makes the best computers today look like the village idiot. When they're saying it's coming, they might genuinely, genuinely be telling the truth from their point of view because they're not aware of what's going on outside of their sphere of, of, of knowledge in the secret uh, um, uh, projects, etc. But things like quantum computers that we're going to have in the future, these guys have got them now. I mean, if we could see the computing technology, information processing technology that they have, we would be staggered at how far ahead of the public arena it is. And, and what we're doing all the time with the Internet, and it's, it's, it's important we use it, massively important. We have to use these things to our advantage and mitigate as much as we can the things that are a disadvantage. But they um, are receiving second by second all over the world the, through many and various sources, which these computers can process and, and put into ordered uh, Models. outcomes um, on where it's going. Um, people's views, people's minds are being, and the state of their minds are being... Ex no. ex Ten years ago, the, the Pentagon way. admitted they have a map of 3D of the entire world already, and they admit with smart dust and all these meters and tracking, they're making the real world searchable like Google. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the technology they're dealing with is fantastic, but you know, we, we must keep coming coming back to this. I suggest, and that is for all their technology and for all their uh, know-how, for all the knowledge they have that they keep from the the people in general. We have the numbers. We have billions compared with a relative handful at the core of this that are behind it all. And and the the idea is to keep us in a constant state of divide and rule, fear. Um, and uh, confusion and chaos and bewilderment um, so that we do not unite and meet this uh, together. Because the, the, one of the uh, things that does come out of these people's revolutions, although, of course, sometimes the military are called off, but even then the military can only go so far, and that is the power of vast numbers of people saying enough. There comes a point where the numbers are so great that there's nothing the system can do about it, and we must keep that in our yes. minds. Paul David was talking, I've been into a jalapeno, I love them, and then got a little bit of it down in my lung. Boy, I tell you, that'll wake you up. <laughs> I drink it five cups of coffee. Uh, it's our final segment with David. I do want to get to a few phone calls with him, but if you just joined us, David Icke, author, researcher, was getting into the awakening. And one of my biggest frustrations, but at the same time, it's exciting because I know how close we are to shifting you know, the tide against tyranny. I believe it's already changed, uh, but the momentum is now accelerating towards awakening and resistance to the globalist uh, system that is so horrible, that is so destructive towards humanity. And David, you talked a lot about compartmentalization, how when you were covering Bilderberg Group, and there down at the bottom of the hill was police officers who had children, who were nice guys, you talked to them, and yeah. here they were guarding uh, these world leaders who were destroying their future, putting poisons in their water and vaccines, openly writing books about how they're doing it. But it's so horrific that that cop either can't or won't look at the evidence 
uh, because they feel like they're part of the power structure. But as soon as we can explain to the military, to bureaucrats, to the police, to ourselves, you know, if you want to look at the who caused the problem, folks, look in the mirror. It's our inaction or our buying into their propaganda that, that has allowed this. But we are under attack by these globalists, 99.9% .9 of us. 99.9% .9 of us have a stake in defeating the New World Order uh, control grid. And so it shouldn't even be a debate. I shouldn't have to be here pleading people to wake up and get involved. It's common sense, no-brainer, once you understand the true agenda. Can you briefly speak to compartmentalization and the real choice we've got? Yes, because um, the... The numbers at the core of this are so small compared with the global population that to control the global population, the, the inner core has to recruit from the target population to keep the target population in line. It has to fill its uniforms and its dark suit administrators uh, positions with the target population. And through compartmentalization, through uh, only letting people know as much as they need to know to, to make their contribution to the, to, the, to the whole package without knowing what the whole package is, uh, it means that people um, with children and grandchildren um, are going to work all over the world, day after day after day, all their lives, helping to build a prison for themselves and for their children, grandchildren, and families. And that situation in, um, in Switzerland, it was, was just a, a classic. I was staying with some people in um, southern Switzerland near the Italian border, and a round robin came round saying the Bilderberg Group meeting this year is, is, is at so-and-so. And it was on top of a mountain, about two hours' drive uh, north into Switzerland. And um, I went um, the day before, two days before, and I saw the people going round, and it was it's about the three very flash hotels. Um, at the palace and the grand, uh, a couple of them were called, and uh, they were putting the fences up and all the people in the in the, the jackets uh, arrange, arranging everything. And then I, I went back on the last day. Now, instead of going up to the to the hotels, I was stopped literally a, a, a few minutes after I turned off the main highway at the bottom of the mountain. I wasn't even allowed near it, and there was this these Swiss policemen in orange jackets, and I asked them what was going on. And they generally didn't know. They said, well, there's an important meeting going on. We don't know anything about it. We've just been told that um, no one can go up uh, through this road any further than here. And they said, oh, I think it's ending this afternoon and you'll be able to go up tomorrow or something. Uh, and these people were, in effect, guarding people they had no idea about. They had no idea what their agenda was, horrendous for their own families. And this is how it works. And we come back again, uh, Alex, to what I was talking about earlier. It's not just those um, protesting about various injustices that need to get uh, informed about how the whole thing works and how it's all connected. So do the people in dark suits and uniforms have to understand that they are cogs in a machine which is there to uh, entrap uh, their children and grandchildren, indeed in the timescale we're looking at, if we allow it to happen even themselves, in a... Uh, an Orwellian global tyranny that would make, uh, you know, George Orwell kind of uh, wince. And, and not only that, just look at Nazi Germany or, or, or communist uh, Russia, Soviet Union, and then add some and then some. And that's what the you're looking at. Look at China. What are the blueprints for the global society tyranny they want? Singapore. Look at that. Then look your children in the eye. Look yourself in the eye and say, what am I doing? Absolutely. Contributing to this. People need to get conscious and make decisions and get out of denial because it's all out in the open now. They just got people to commit to denial, and so people don't want to feel like they were conned, and so people are now buying into torture, secret arrest, checkpoints, and one of the other big mind control systems is role-playing. Oh, it's just civil libertarians that don't like illegal checkpoints or warrantless blood draws. Oh, it's just activists that don't like these wars. Oh, it's just, well, I'm not an activist. Well, I'm not a... People need to see themselves in the role of getting informed and then as they grow, informing others because this is a life and death situation. Here's my last point that we're going to jam in. Uh, a few phone calls from folks that have been patiently holding Ron, Jack, Richard, and uh, John. We'll, we'll just have time to get uh, to those. 
But TSA invades roads, highways with Viper checkpoints. They've got 9,000 locations with telescreens going up in shopping malls, Walmart, saying, watch your neighbors. They're approaching every professional I know, my dad, uh, doctors he knows, saying, you know, spy on your neighbors for us. We're Homeland Security. They are rolling out something by every historical yardstick that is super tyranny. And... Some people are waking up, others are waking up but getting scared, and others are just saying, this is freedom. Warrantless wiretapping, drones, uh, the government taking veterans' death benefits. I mean, it's just, we're already living in incredible looting and stealing that's going on, and, and they want us to not trust each other and spy on each other instead of looking up the mountain at the globalist. They're the ones we should be watching. Exactly. And, and, you know, it's, uh, we were talking about it just now. I, I call it labeling. Um, it, they, they label people so that you're all, uh, if you like, tarred with the same brush. This is what this Southern Poverty uh, Law Center was trying to do and, and the ADL do when they talk about, you, you believe this, oh, you, you're, you're a far-right extremist. Um, and, uh, of course, what we're looking at again with the spy on your neighbor is just what we were talking about a few minutes ago. There are too few of them to... Uh, control and uh, keep surveillance on the population so they have to get the target population to keep surveillance on each other. This is how it's working. Divide and rule on a massive scale. The beast is trying to replicate itself and build the army it needs. That's why we've got to build our army of awakening now so people recognize it. That's it. And the other thing you mentioned, a very relevant point, is embarrassment. Hey, you know, people, if you believe the world was a certain way and now you're starting to realize it was nothing like that, nothing to be embarrassed about. From cradle to where you are now, you have been bombarded through your education system, through the media, day after day, minute by minute, with a certain view, uh, an information source that tells you certain things are true about yourself, the world, and how it works. Uh, and therefore, don't be embarrassed about the fact that you bought it because almost anyone would buy it. Instead of that, celebrate, celebrate the fact yes. that you have broken out of it and let's move on. Instead of, no, it can't be like that because I must have been wrong earlier in my life. We're all wrong earlier in our life until we uh, start to understand what's going on. So get used to it and get on with it. Absolutely. I liken it to a neighbor who you asked to water your plants and you come back and your jewelry's all stolen. And then you go, well, it couldn't have been them that did it. And you have them watch your house again, and now your TV gets stolen and your computer. Pretty soon you stop having that neighbor watch your stuff. We've just been trained to accept government mega corporations raping and robbing us. Wake up, get off your knees, get out of your trance. Ron in New York, you're on the air with David Ike. We're going through to 30 after, and we're going to let him go in about 10 minutes. He's been gracious. Go ahead, Ron. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My call today, and I'd like to get both of your opinions on this, deals with um, the mayor of New York City latest foray into intruding into Arizona with uh, basically hired contract agents. Yeah, for those that don't know, they're going to gun shows, doing private sales, telling people, oh my gosh, we bought guns without a background, knowing that people don't know that it's legal to sell a gun to your neighbor. And what is Bloomberg getting ready to run for president doing? Suing gun manufacturers, going to Arizona, and try I meant to get to that, I'm glad you brought it up, Ron, running around trying to take our guns. Uh, uh, please continue, Ron, but David, why do they want our guns so bad? Well, um, again, <laughs> it seems to be a theme today. Um, shades of gray and being streetwise. Personally, I don't own guns. I don't want to own a gun and all the rest of it, and I don't want to resist uh, with guns. I want to resist with non-violent, mass non-cooperation to stop the system working. However, um, on another level, they know that there's lots of people that are quite uh, okay with, with, with using guns to resist. And of course, if you want to take over from a uh, a, 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 a take over a country of people, then if they're not armed from your point of view, that is much more, uh, you know, applicable or something you want rather than um, an armed... Uh, an yeah, armed let me population. let me throw this in because we're almost out of time and I want Ron to be able to finish. But the, the, point, the point I'm making here, um, Alex, it's an important one. Th what I'm saying is just because people in America, you may not believe in guns, you may not want people to have guns, and there are many people that believe that, and it's a legitimate view, just as having them is a legitimate view. Please, see the shades of grey. Don't ask, don't give
get caught in the debate of guns or no guns, get caught in the understanding or the question, why do they want to take the guns from the population now? What's the agenda for that? Who benefits from that from their point of view? Because they want us to get into this uh, uh, gun, no gun debate, that, because th that, that takes us over here. We need to focus, whether we believe in guns or whether we don't, on why they want to do it now. And it's because they uh, will find that easier from their point of view to, uh, yeah. uh, in their mind, to take over that, an, uh, an unarmed population rather than an armed one. David, I want to be able to have Ron counter back and get to some other calls, but let me just myself state this clearly, to use a Star Wars analogy. Obi-Wan Kenobi's not running around with his lightsaber killing innocent people. He uses it in defense. And it, the issue is it's a major checkmate that if things get so desperate and they're taking people to put them on trucks to FEMA camps, that if the Germans would have had guns and resisted, that wouldn't have happened. The same thing with Lenin or Stalin. And so I'm nonviolent offensively. But nobody's taking my kids to a FEMA camp, period. And they can't stand it, and they know it. And people need more guns. It's the answer against this tyranny, the counterbalance of power against this paramilitary globalist force massively in an arms race against the people. Uh, Ron in New York, uh, your comment on that. Okay, uh, my larger point was actually going to be about the, uh, the, the spinning and manipulations of the media. I've noticed one thing from all the tapes I've seen where they, you know, have these, these videotapes supposedly of what took place in Arizona, these sales. And what I have noticed is that you do not see a sale come to fruition, meaning the guy makes a statement about I can't uh, pass a background check. But you don't actually see somebody transacting, giving him a firearm, and he gives them cash. Now, I've seen this been reported for two days now, and I find that unusual. And I begin to wonder whether there even was a transaction. We're just being manipulated. No, Ron, it's, I mean, it's a great point. There, I mean, there is so much lying going on. I appreciate your call. Uh, any other comments on that, David? Uh, well, I worked in the media for a long time, uh, the BBC and newspapers and radio in uh, Britain. And uh, if anyone uh, saw... The inside of a mainstream newsroom in whatever form it is, paper, television, radio, uh, they would never uh, believe a word they uh, uh, read or heard in the, in, the, in the media again because, if, A, you don't have to be uh, intelligent. There are some intelligent journalists. You don't have to be. It's often a bad career move, and you certainly um, do not have to be informed. Some of the most uninformed uh, people I've ever met have been professional journalists journalists and professional politicians. And there's also this um, least line of resistance. If you are a proper journalist and you uh, uh, are interested in the truth, then you are going to constantly be in conflict with those uh, running your media organization who don't want you to cross that line. So there comes a point where to uh, advance the career, to keep the job, to keep the check coming in at the end of the month, you stay within those lines. And what does that mean? You say um, what is within uh, the acceptable realm and ratio of, of, of the, the, the norms. And if the norm is guns are bad, gun shows bad, then that's how you yes. report it. Absolutely. And if you play ball, then you uh, sin in that mainstream media system. But now people are aware of it, so it's falling apart. So the globalists are coming in, trying to restrict the alternative media, and the fight is on. Uh, let's talk to Jack in Illinois. Jack, you're on the air with David Icke. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, I just Hello, have Jack. one quick uh, – hi, David uh, – one comment and one quick question. I think it's important that people stay positive because like attracts like and also fearless because at the end of the day – the light is going to prevail, and everyone needs to have that reassurance. And then my question for you, David, is uh, I'm a fan of yours. I've seen many of your videos. Could you please explain to Alex's listeners your concept of combing the mirror? Uh, combing the mirror, yeah. Um, first of all, uh, Jack, I absolutely agree with you about staying positive. Um, uh, I... Um I talk about the things that are happening and some of the things we need to do to stop them happening, but my um, my view of the outcome uh, is a very, very positive. I think it, it, well, it, it's positive to admit the bad, down. so then you can recognize the bad from the good. Yeah, this 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 controls.
system is coming down. My question is, how bad is it going to get before uh, that, that, that comes? And that's, a, that's the question we need, we need to answer ourselves. How much are we going to stand on the sidelines and let this, this go on unchallenged? Because uh, before it comes down, um, it's going to be more extreme than it needs to be if we, if, we, if we resist it or stop cooperating with it now. In terms of combing the mirror, well, you know, in the time we've got, Jack, um, uh, it, uh, difficult, but in simple terms, um, we are projecting all the time our inner state of being um, in, 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 in many ways, um, um, Alex, in the same principle as the way we have the Internet as a projection of our own uh, collective mind. Um, and therefore, uh, if you look at it this way, um, the world that we experience is like a movie screen. The inner self is like the projector at the back of uh, the uh, theater. And we can stand uh, and shout and cuss at the screen in the theater for as long as we like. It ain't going to change. It's hit the screen. It's a done deal. We have to go back to the projector and change the reel. And all the time we're being encouraged to look outside of ourselves for answers when the answers are actually within us because the world is a collective expression of the current state of Well, that's Plato's cave. That's Plato's cave. If they don't, yeah, if they don't stop that, if we don't change that, then nothing can change. For instance... Inner self, I have no power. Outer expression, a few people run the world. Um, inner self, um, I d do not have the courage to stand up for what I believe in. Uh, outer expression, a few people run the world. When we change, the world must change. Because the power yes. that is being used to control us yes. is the power we give away every minute of every day. When Beautifully said. doing that, the power dynamics shifts dramatically and it's all over. Absolutely. I'm going to jam in a few quick questions, a few final uh, calls are from Richard and John. Then we're out of time, David. This has been amazing. But just in my 16 years fighting the globalist, incredible success because I know history and believe in the destiny of liberty. You've had incredible success. There are other people more intelligent who have greater potential than you and I do. They need to realize they have that potential and step up to the plate. Richard in Canada, you're on the air with David Icke. Go ahead. Greetings, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to speak with you both. You've both had a profound impact on my life. Uh, I have a quick question. Like, you, Alex, you do an amazing job of exposing the globalists in, uh, in the United States, and David, you do an amazing job exposing them in the UK. I find there's nobody here in Canada doing nearly as good of a job. I was just w looking, I was going to ask if you guys could maybe impart on me a few tips on how to do your amazing research. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, really, it's just studying how the world works and knowing history and then clicking with the info uh, and, 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 and just being that leader in your area, picking the issues you're going to stand up for, whether it's you know, having local media or, or the right to keep and bear arms or sovereignty or exposing your prime minister calling for world government. David, what's your view? Well, the, the, Richard, there's a blueprint. Uh, there's a blueprint uh, that you find in every single country, and Canada is no different. Uh, in fact, it's one of the more extreme examples. Um, you know, in my research over the years, watch the country that's next door to the country, what the, fo the, the focus is on. You know, one of the great Illuminati centers on the planet is, is, is Austria, which is... Uh, next door to the country that he's focused on, Germany. And so much stuff goes on in Canada, not least in uh, Ontario, um, that, 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 is, that crosses the border uh, into America is in, in various ways. So Canada's a very, very important uh, place uh, in this whole uh, global uh, arena, not least because, with the greatest respect, people are looking at the United States primarily and not to Canada. Yeah. And, and if you, that, that's, that's just what you want if you want to put some of your institutions and networks um, in a place where they're going to be less seen. But in terms of the blueprint, if you can just uh, get your, I'm sure you, 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 you have, you get your head around um, where the, they want to take the world and the methods they use to take us there. Um, and that, in effect, that knowledge is like when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle, it's like that point where you put all the straight pieces together and you've got the frame. And then from that point on, in any fast. country, Canada or anywhere, you can start putting the detail in within that frame and see how it plays yeah. out in your David, we're, we're out of time. Richard, I appreciate your call. I'm sorry. Well, we'll try to jam John in with a qu quick final comment here, but it, it, it's very simple. There's a continuity of agenda. You find out there's global boards that are setting the standardized programs. That's where you're going to find the information. Uh, excellent points, David.